I'm Geeta Shridhar. Uh, I'm a professional Bharatanatyam dancer. Uh, I grew up in India, so I trained in India as well. Um, I was trained at Kalakshetra, one of the uh, very famous uh, dance institutions. Um, following my basic training, I worked with Chandralekha, a pioneer in uh, contemporary Indian dance. I worked with her for five years, and I have um, sort of in my current practice, I try and use both the styles that I have learned. Um, I've always performed, I still perform, I teach, I choreograph, I do lecture demonstrations. Uh, I moved to this country in 1992 and since then I have moved around within UK as well. I lived in Scotland for five years, I lived in the Midlands for another five years and I currently uh, reside in London. I work at Kingston University teaching uh, BA degree students um, dance in the dance department. I also do private lessons and I also teach at uh, a Tamil school called London School of Carnatic Music which is based in South East London. And this is Supriya, my student who did her Arangetram, her debut performance last year. Let her speak about herself. I'm Sai Supriya Sri Kumar. I've been learning dance since I was six years old and I've been under the tutelage of Gipanti for the last six, six, seven years and it was mainly my most advanced training that I did under Gipanti. Um, yeah, before that I was under the tutelage of Sudarshini Aunty and Krishna Lavanti. and yeah, I completed my Anga training last year. For that, me and Geet Bhanti, for training, we went to India for one and a half months, where we trained every day. It was a very good experience. It was tough, but it all paid off in the end, for sure. It definitely paid off. And I was glad to have done it. And you're going to perform tonight, as well? Yeah, tonight's performance is for charity. So. And what will you be performing? Any Arangajum items? No, it's completely different. It's all yeah, we had to specially <laughs> choreograph uh, for this one. Uh, just to say that, you know, uh, not to repeat it, when to say that you need to improve, Arangajum is just uh, an initiation into the world of dance. Um, I think uh, one needs to move on and learn more and more, do more complicated things and not be in the safe zone as such, you know. So you, you try and develop um, uh, more learning the intricacies more in, in detail, so so that was the aim for me when uh, this offer came to do this performance. I thought I should make it a little bit, you know, put up the stand a little bit higher so she can uh, work towards that. Um, yeah, so we started training for this particular performance since, um, say, February of this year. Uh, now because uh, she started university, so it was now getting more difficult for her to come for classes uh, so regularly as. Um, her timings and my timings wasn't really comfortable, convenient for both of us at that point. Um, but she did manage to come and uh, during the summer we really worked quite intensely again this time. Um, and how did you um, prepare for your Arangetram? Oh, I think um, Arangetram, uh, her parents were very, very, uh, very organized, you know, and they, they had fixed up the theatre at least a couple of years before beforehand and they two years yeah two years before and they told me the date this is the date and this is the time so um, and we had fixed up the musicians also pretty much uh, a year before that and uh, so we we knew we had that much time we knew that uh, you know we how we could program our um, you know preparation and to be very careful in choosing what items what will suit her it's not just about saying that okay I'm the teacher I decide but it was more what is her age, what is her um, uh, experience in the past and what can she cope with and what she can't. And it's also very, you know, it's a transition period where she was just finishing school and entering university. So it's, it's a lot of emotions that way also for her, you know, entering that different world and uh, then having to do something like this. And this is, uh, 
this has become part of life, you know, for most Indians and Sri Lankan families here that it's almost a must. It's, it's like a mandatory thing to do, an arrangatum of some sort, whether it's dance or music or whatever it is, that um, it, it, it's, it's almost compulsory that they do something like this. So it was important, it was very important uh, uh, how we developed that. So we had plenty of time to prepare. And so we did that uh, in a very good pace so that she, she doesn't get lost or confused because uh, we hear stories how, oh, my teacher only put this together last month before the Arangetram. And we think, we've heard such stories. And uh, and going by my own experience of having done my own Arangetram all those years ago, uh, I knew, you know, how to go about it. So, yeah, starting point was that, that we knew we had plenty of time to and then we had very carefully planned it in such a way that we knew we were going to get the costumes and the songs and some and some of the sing, uh, musicians came from India for it. So we could we went to India. So we worked with them as well while we were there. And she really had solid training uh, every day morning, eight to about twelve or so, um, almost every day, every day. And and for her, it was I think I'll let her speak about that aspect where the heat and everything was not really helping her. But I grew coming from India, it was it was fine and I was like thoroughly enjoying this morning sunlight and having a class and uh, uh, in India I live near the beach and um, you know so it's it's such a pleasure, pleasure for me to do something like that in the morning. Yeah so we took one piece at a time and concentrated on it and made sure that every little bit is sorted and that she has no doubt in her mind about all those pieces and things and we also went to Chitambaram and that's that was a uh, very important move again, very planned move that Chidambaram is a, is a place um, uh, known for uh, Lord Nataraja, the Lord of Dance. Um, so we went and did a little puja, a ceremony where uh, we presented uh, the feet bells that she was going to wear for the Arangetram. So that a special puja was done on that and she also got to dance in front of the shrine. So it was uh, done so holistically right through. Um, I, I think that, that basically that that sums up for me as to what I went through, you know, like in, pre in preparing her for this engagement. But I suppose you should ask her about what her feelings are. What are your feelings, Lad? Um, no, I agree with that. A lot of people say that they have to do an engagement, and a lot of people just do it for the sake of doing it. And at first, I'm not going to lie, it was a lot of pressure from my parents, like, you should do one, you've learned dance for this long. I'm not the best, I'm not the most confident person, so I wasn't too keen in having one. Then as we progressed, I got more and more into it and a bit more confident as well. But um, yeah, the whole India trip was, was a good experience, but I'm not, I'm quite a fussy eater as well. I'm not a fan of the Indian food, <laughs> so, and the heat as well at that time of the morning. But it definitely paid off all those lessons in India and just training every day and going for it. We still did the whole repertoire like every day towards the end of it, which so I built up my stamina as well. So yeah, for the Arangetram, I found it really easy to just dance, especially dancing in the heat. The like the lights and stuff, you don't find it as hot, so it's useful. How did you cope with the food in the heat then? Um, for the first three weeks, I went out there with my dad, so he used to take me to restaurants and stuff. Then thankfully for the last three weeks my mum flew out, so she cooked. We stayed in a, an apartment with a kitchen and everything. So for the last three weeks my mum cooked for me. That was good. <laughs> but for the heat, they had two fans. In the class, <laughs> yes, we did have fans in the class. And also we, we had to force feed her, you know, so we thought uh, banana would do her good or, you know, chocolates every now and then. And, um, yeah, she was a fussy, I think she's also a fussy eat even here, you know, <laughs> or, or at least she will probably get her burgers and things here. But, uh, um, so we, we sort of looked at that aspect of, you know, eat healthy food right through and, you know, just for consistency, you know, not just for working towards the Arangetum, but in general to have that kind of stamina because you don't know what the nerves are going to do on that day. So, you know, it was important to go that route as well. Um, I think the family, especially her brother, 
Her brother was so, he was the one making notes to say, oh, today my sister didn't do well on this. And, you know, so it was a, it was a whole, her family committed and my family committed too. So my, my sisters also were dancers. And so I, they came to our house for the rehearsals. We have a huge space. And um, so, so it's my mom and my sister and my daughter, all of us sitting every day. So, so she almost had an audience for every little rehearsal that we had. So it was such a nice experience, I think. <laughs> What kind of spiritual journey did you take? Or, was, or did you not? I think in general we all are religious, you know, I think that's the underlying, you know. Uh, but Chidamu definitely hit me to know that Lord Nadraja used to dance there himself and to get to dance in front of the shrine was a really good experience. But in general we're all religious and so you drew a lot of power from that? Yeah, it definitely inspired me being there. And all the different um, gods that you represent represent on the stage, how did they, you equate that with British life, say? Like, my parents used to take me to um, the temple every Sunday for like religious lessons. And so I've learned a lot about God that way as well. And obviously priests and stuff, they talk to you about God, knowing that you're a British brat. <laughs> yeah, I used to go for lessons on a Sunday, so in that way. And Givanti researches a lot on the internet as well to tell me stories, explain what I'm doing. She, so I know what I'm doing in that way. You can kind of bring it out in your facial expressions and stuff. Would, would you say that's the most important aspect? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know whether you can call it a religious and whether you really need to be religious, you know, to, to do Bharatanatyam, for example. But um, I think you need to, you can be spiritual maybe, you know, you can, you can believe in it. I think that, that in itself transfers to, you know, whatever you want to uh, call it. I think, um, I think we all are spiritual by nature. We are, you know, slightly sort of saying, okay, if you do this, then that's what you'll get, you know. So it's just believing in, uh, you know, what's good, what's bad. And, um, yeah, I think that's what it is. Of course, of course, we give it a form. So if you're talking about that, then we give it a form. And all the stories that we say through dance shows that we do believe in that, and that's why we're doing it. Um, I'm not saying that you uh, you have to believe in it to do it. It, it, is, it is an art form at the end of the day, and if, if that is your way of expressing, then that's great. Yeah. But obviously you're using that because you believe in it, and that in itself is spirituality, so I think that's what it is. So tonight, what kind of... Are there, are there any spiritual uh, events? They're, they're all uh, based on Indian gods and goddesses that, yeah, today's evening in the performance, but... Um, uh, I've just used the traditional format for for this evening, almost like what you would do for a Naringit in the same number of items and everything. Uh, but they're all very different from what we had done before. It's a full solo performance. Full solo performance. And with live musicians? Yes. Yeah, and again, we've got the singer come from India. Yeah. Just the singer this time. <laughs> the rest of them are from here. And she's very, very fortunate to have uh, the drummer today. He's uh, Kare Kuri Krishnamurti. Kare Kuri Krishnamurti, he's also uh, from India and he's also at Kalakshetra. Uh, he's one of the senior most artists that we have in London that we all rely on because he, um, he gives us the rhythmic syllables. He is, uh, and it's very, his knowledge in music is so immense that he advises on various things, various aspects in terms of dance and he's always been known for um, uh, his work with dancers rather than with musicians. And such. So, very fortunate to have him on board today. Your other school friends, are they involved in Indian dance? Um, they've always looked at me and wanted to be. I've got a few friends who do Kathak. But, um, yeah, they've asked me to teach them. But I'm not sure how to do that. We were coming to watch and support today. So, so do you feel t in any way different from them being able to do this? Yeah, it's definitely a gift, I guess. But a gift that you worked hard for. Yeah, I would like to think so. So when you were preparing for an Arigatra, before you went to India, how did you fit in your hours with school time? Um, I finished my A-levels in early June, 
So after that, I used to go to Keith Auntie's house every day up until we left for England. For him, did that so, It was literally every single day in the summer, from June to September, mm -hmm. that we had rehearsals. But before that, how did you? Um, she used to come twice, twice a week. A week yeah. Twice a week after school. Uh, five to seven, or yeah, it was yeah. five to seven that she was coming. So on a Monday and a Wednesday, I think it was. And we used to hire a hall in Hampstead then. So we, we did our classes there. And we had other students come as well, but she always uh, has had one to one lessons with me. So the others would sometimes come early and watch her dance, and you know, and uh, yeah, she, she managed to be such an inspiration for the rest as well. <laughs> You're at uni now, yeah. so how do you see your dancing progressing from now on? Um, there are quite a lot of shows at university, like cultural shows, that uni children themselves organise for charities and stuff. So there's quite a few coming up, but they're more fusion rather than pure bandland here. Yeah, true. But it's still, it keeps you going, I guess, and you're still showing off your art, I guess, and raising money for charity as well, so it's all worth it. So you're going to continue dancing? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and how's that going to impact with your work when you become a worker, when you've graduated? I'll still go for lessons. I, <laughs> I say this now, <laughs> we'll see in three years. So um, you'll always be the guru? Yes, definitely. Well, <laughs> I'll be pleased to be her guru. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't, I've never feared, you know, for uh, losing students or anything. Uh, like that, and sometimes I do send her to, you know, uh, intense workshops that uh, it was organized by more Katha Mila Fest. Mila Fest it was, and uh, yeah, so I, I let her go and see because sometimes that's learning as well. You can't just learn just from one guru. And as I said, my sister is also a dancer and a teacher, so um, I uh, sometimes send her to my sister where every time she goes to India on her own. Uh, and then I say, you know, while you're there, go and get some <laughs> extra lessons, a different approach to the, you know, same Bharatanatyam, but sometimes it's a different approach. So, so that, you know, that experience also contributes to her growth as an artist. Tell me about your brother. Does he dance or does he just make notes? Um, he does vocal. He learns vocal and carnotic violin. But I think he used to come to dance lessons to watch. Yeah, huh? to watch, because we used to leave straight after school, so he used to come as well. So I think from that, he listens to whatever Keith Nanti says, and he'll come home and tell me, so Keith Nanti says more Aramandi, he'll come home and tell me, you need to say more Aramandi, you need to lift your hands up and everything. <laughs> okay. I personally think Arangetram is a gem of a concept. Because it's, it's almost as ancient as the dance form itself. And you know, quite often people ask me this question, you know, why is there a need for this arrangement? Because it's so much extravagance and you know, uh, what is the purpose of this? You know, what are you achieving? Is it just the families boasting about their wealth and showing off their daughters to, you know, prove to the world for some, you know, what, what is the reason really? And uh, where do you stand with this as a teacher and as uh, someone who wants uh, to promote Bharatanatyam more? wanted to let it grow and all that. Um, I feel that uh, whatever the case is, and I think in, in Britain, we have a um, floating population all the time. We have people come from India, Sri Lanka, everywhere. And so there is clearly a need for Bharatanatyam. Uh, and, um, and as long as there is a need, then it is a very positive sign for, for this art form to sustain longer and it has sustained all these years you know we're talking about 2000 years really and if it's if it's sustained all these years and uh, of course times are changing as well there are a lot of experimental work going on you know like uh, especially in diasporic communities where uh, you want to experiment with the, the current dance form that is going on in that country and all that uh, all that is healthy i really support that and uh, but at the same time having you know ha had this form with us for all these years, uh, I think Arangetram really contributes for that, you know, particularly for that. And even in India, I believe uh, this this idea of solo performance is slowly uh, fading out because more group work and ballet and that sort of a thing is coming up. So uh, Arangetram definitely, whatever happens, like you said, you know, some some of them don't continue, but for whatever reasons, at least you we have a what about. 
15, 20 year engagements in a year, you know, in Britain alone. So, so, th so that that will definitely be a an inspiration for the younger generation, and uh, I'm sure it it has a long way to go. You know, maybe another two thousand years. <laughs> <laughs>